Amen. All right, let's turn our Bible to Ecclesiastes chapter 9. Wow. So this month we've been teaching about finances and to today particularly we've been praying and speaking on how do you exactly believe God for funding either for a personal project or either for business. And the reason why it's good to talk about this is that sometimes when you read or listen to the stories of people, because I get to pray with a lot of people, I see people that really are believing God for these kinds of miracle. That believe in God that there will be something that I'm funding. So there's someone that has done a startup and is wondering that I really want a miracle as you know for my startup. Someone that wants to grow the scale, the business is there. So we're just going to delve into this. Let's turn our Bible to Ecclesiastes chapter 9 in verse 16. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 in verse 16. Yeah, the Bible says this. The Bible says this, I will, jump, I will read from verse 15. The Bible says, There was found in it, in a city, a great poor wise man, and he by his wisdom delivered the city. That's great. Yet no man remembered the same poor man. That's so pathetic. So he delivered the city, but no man remembered him. Next line. The Bible says this, Then said I, Wisdom is better than strength, Nevertheless, the poor man's wisdom is despised and his words are not heard. So the question now is that why are his words not heard? Because he was poor. That's why poverty is not a great thing to have. The Bible says that this man was exceedingly wise. In fact, his wisdom produced some kind of result. But the major challenge is that because he was what? Because he was poor, his wisdom was not heard. You know what poverty does? Poverty is what makes a last born. Sorry, poverty is what makes a firstborn have no sin in the family. I, I, I know of families where there is a firstborn that should have, you know, that should have a major sin or something, but has no say. And the reason why is that because it doesn't have the financial power to be able to what? Back it up. It doesn't have what? The financial power to be able to what? Back it up. I, I, I know people that will get married to someone not because they love the person, but because the person has money. I know people support a certain person not because the person is great, because the person has money. So, a lot of Christians keep praying and they say that, Lord, I want to buy my first house. I want to build my first project. I want to do my first project. I need funding for this, Lord. How do I... Am I even really able? And you know the thing, I'm grateful for this kind of church because we just kind of know how to delve into areas that people are very concerned with people. Is that not true? Exactly. That's a good opportunity to clap. That's, that's a good opportunity to clap. Praise God. That's a good opportunity to clap. Clap away the heat. Praise God. Hallelujah. Yeah, I'm so grateful to God to do that. So, 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 so today we're talking about how to believe God for project and business financing. So the first thing is, is why, why is it important that you must, why is funding important? Because number one, funding is what takes your ideas into, into business. That's why it's important. Because number one, funding is what takes your ideas and turn them into a product or a business. The, a lot of people are going to keep having ideas, but until those ideas become products or services, nothing happens. That's what funding does. And, and I'm saying this because if you always have ideas and you do not plan how to have the funds, the ideas will just remain ideas. They will never become reality until there's funding. The second thing that funding does is this. You know, they assert all markets will only be penetrated by the amount of money you have. Funding creates pathway into markets. So, you can have an idea that I want to do a water business, a gas business, a kerosene business, a paper business, a manufacturing business. It's funding that actually gives you what? The headway inside. So, the question now is this, which is a big question. Why do people pray for funding and they never get it? Why do people 
Christians fast for funding and they never get it. And one of the key reasons why people never get funding is this, because they don't have a strategic plan. And you know, I, I, I don't know if we were here last week. Can I get my fork and knife again? Do you have it? I, I, I didn't ask for it. I just want, if we were doing it, not last week, during the midweek, I, I thought about that. Let's turn our Bible to Proverbs chapter 6. Let's look at that quickly. Proverbs chapter 6. Proverbs chapter 6, verse, verse 6. It said, go to the, the ant, you sluggard, consider a way and be wise. So look at what the ant does. So, so, so thank you. Thank you. Let me just. So, so if you're around on Wednesday, and I don't know what you do on Wednesday evening, but you need to be in service. You need to what? You need to be in service. I don't want you to, you need to be in service. So praise the Lord. So this is very powerful for us today. And I said, yet on, on Wednesday I said this, I read 1 Corinthians to us, that Christ is made unto us. Who remembers? The Bible says to the Greek, something to the, what? That's true. I said the Bible says Christ is made to us the power of God and what? The wisdom of God. And I said, it's like a fork and knife. I said this, I said, so we had a piece of chicken. Some of us have seen the picture online. I said, do you know the thing? If you want to eat a piece of chicken, you need a fork and knife. You need the knife to cut, what? You need the knife to cut the chicken and the fork to pick it up. If you have just fork to eat, the chicken will become a problem. Because you have to put the whole thing in your mouth at a time. If you have just knife... To use the knife to pick the chicken will be a problem. So it's the two of them. So the Bible says Christ is wisdom of God, but Christ is what? Power of God. And I said, the problem with the church is this. There are two kinds of Christian. There are Christian that their only approach to financial problem is power, prayer. That every time there's financial problem, shall we pray? Shall we pray? It's, a, it's always a prayer approach. I said, they are not incorrect. They are incomplete. Because all they have is a knife approach to their problem. But there are some other people that all they have is a fork. What is a fork? Wisdom. So every time there's a financial problem, they're always saying, let's figure it out. Let's figure it out. It's not as if you cannot figure it out, but some things have to be cut for you. If they're not cut for you, you cannot pick it up. And it takes power to cut, sir. It takes what? Power to cut. So there are some, there are some men that are very smart here. Every time they have a problem, they bring a pen and paper, call their mentor. I, I know, but you have the wisdom, you have the fork person. You can go back and watch this full sermon online. You're the fuck person. But some of you need the power dimension. You know, and I, 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 I love this because a couple met me, they, they're into oil and gas. <laughs> and the husband said, Pastor, you spoke about me and my wife. He said, the husband said, I'm the, he said, my, my husband is the prayer person, the power person. The wife is the prayer person. The man is the wisdom person. He said, that's the problem. I always tell my wife she's praying too much. I tell me I don't pray enough about the contract. And I said, the two are important because the two need to what? Walk hand in hand. The question is this. Let me help you today. All the power people, when you have a financial problem, the only, your, your main method is three days fasting and prayer. Prayer. Where are you? Raise up your hands. Stand on your feet. Stand on your feet. Let me see you. Where are all the power people? Your main method is prayer. Stand. It's a good thing. Stand. Let's see all the prayer people here. Stand. 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 Let's appreciate them, everybody. Let's, let's appreciate them. Stop lying. You're just making things complicated for yourself. Don't lie in the house of God. Where are the prayer people? Stand. Let me see you. Stand. Stand. Let's appreciate them in Jesus' name. Let's appreciate them. God bless you. Wow. Fantastic. Where are the wisdom people? Every time there's a financial problem, you forget about prayer. You just bring up pyro and paper and say, let's work this out. Oh, stand. Let me see you. Stand. Let me see you. Okay. The rest of you, where are you? The rest of you use both, right? Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> Why do I believe they are lying? Praise God. <laughs> you know what I'm saying so? Because the one that uses prayer needs to learn wisdom. The one that uses just wisdom needs to learn what? Prayer. Because Christ is made wisdom and what? Power. Hallelujah. Glory to God. 
Yeah. So, so what, what does that mean? The reason I'm saying so is that so that you can know where you are defaulting. Some of you, all you need is that you, the paperwork is already done. You just need small fasting and prayer so that they will cut it for you. Just, that's all you need. But instead of you to do small fasting and prayer, you'll be networking, eating radicin, eating here, eating here, as if eating will bring you the contract. You've eaten now, you have a pot belly. Nothing has changed. That, that's someone that he hits home. Praise God. That, that, you know, the, when you hear that kind of thing, just get good to clap. Just good to clap. Praise God. And some of you, you have prayed and prayed and prayed. Your neck is very long. Listen, God has answered your prayer. What you now need is what? Wisdom. Just what to do next. You've prayed and prayed and prayed. You've prayed. God has answered your prayer. The angels are mobilized, but the angels need someone to just walk with you to make that happen. So, after this meeting, will you go back and begin to say, okay, uh, where do I need to work on? So, we say one of the reasons why people don't get funding is this. Watch the reason why. Because a lot of people do not have a funding strategy. So, when you want to start a business or start a project, one of the key things that is important is that you should have is what? A funding strategy. You know, sometimes I travel abroad. And when I travel abroad, you will not believe this. I don't know if this happens a lot to me. I see people abroad that are asking me for money. I say, I come from Nigeria. Pounds is, is not the same mate with Naira. But what has happened is that they've gotten abroad and because they didn't have a funding strategy, they are stuck. I'm telling you, they are stuck. And so they resort to begging. I mean, people travel, travel abroad, their main strategy when I get that will hustle. There's no strategy called hustle. It's that strategy is suffering. Even if you want to do something, want to work, what work will I do? So see what the Bible says here. This is why people don't get funding. See what the Bible says here. The Bible says this in verse 6. It says, go to the hand you slogan and lend from her, which have no guide, no overseer or, or, or ruler. That means there's nobody telling this person what to do, the ant. He provides and meets in summer, and gathers our food in the harvest. Look at, so what is he saying? He's saying what the ant does is this. Watch this now. When he says this, people don't understand what he's saying. I want to explain to you. He says, when there's no need to gather food, the ant is moving around, <laughs> gathering food. Why? The ant is saying there's a day that will need food that will not be able to gather. Let me gather food. So the Bible says, because in summer, the ant can gather food, can get food. So see what it says. It says, it says, it provided a meat in summer and gathered a food in harvest. Verse 9 says, how long will you sleep, O slugger? When will you arise out of their sleep? What's the next verse? Yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little for the other hand, so shall thy poverty come on you as one that travelleth, and thy want as what? He said, your want will come like an arm robber. You will feel it. But why does it want come as an unrobber? Because the day your want comes, you are not prepared for it. Why did it say like a robber? It's unprepared. So you need to prepare for it. You know that this year you want to start a business. What did you say about last year? You know that your kids are going to get into school. What's the plan for their school first? You know that you're going to start a business. And it is my struggle for, the, for one year. What's the plan to start a business? For example, um, I, I meant to have announced it, but I didn't get to announce it earlier on. Um, sometimes in the next few weeks, we're going to move our church away for three months into another venue because we're trying to expand this place to see double people. We're trying to, we're trying to expand because you can see the whole place is full. People are in the extension. Some people are sitting under the sun, you know, and all of those kind of things. But someone said, so one of the guys said, Pastor, well, you've not raised an offering. I said, because from the Titan offering, we've been putting a lot of money to aside. Right now, just because we're changing this tent, I think right now we've already crossed about 150 or 200 million and we spent already. Because the, the way the construction is, is that everything needs to be on ground so that it's just installation while we're away. But, 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 but that's what it needs to be. Why is it that you think of your house rent just two months to the time house rent is due and you begin to harass the whole brethren? It says your wants will come like an amen. So the reason, so some of you, you don't have a funding problem. What you have is a planning problem. 
Some of you don't have what? You don't have a funding problem. What you have what? It's a planning problem. Glory to God. I said glory to God. So, 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 you know, and some people do not plan, some people do not plan their finances because they are financially hopeless. What does that mean? They've had a lot of bad and series of financial issues. Now they are just tired and exhausted. And they're just hoping whatever happens, happens. I'm not going to kill myself. Glory to God. So the second reason, the second reason why people, the second reason why people can access, so the first reason why people access finance is that there's no plan. There's no plan. There's no plan. So question, this is your project, what's the financial plan for it? This is your MBA, what's the financial plan for it? This is your marriage, what's the financial plan for it? Someone says, my uncle, your uncle cannot be a financial plan. What's the financial plan for it? Glory to God. All right, let's go ahead. The second reason why people can accept funding is in the book of John chapter 6. John chapter 6. This is good. Verse 4. Chapter 6. Let's read from verse 5. And when Jesus lifted up his eyes, he saw a great multitude, a, a great multitude come unto him. And he said to Philip, now, I, I love Jesus. Jesus said to Philip, what did they say? What, what did they ask? Let's read. Want to go? Oh, no, 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 no. Just the ladies. Uh, ladies can read better. The brothers do not read better. They, they feel. Ladies, want to go? Oh, just five brothers, ladies read. Okay, brothers, let's read together. This is the, you can win this. Brothers, want to go? Okay. So, it says, when shall we buy that? So, let me just ask a simple question. Let me ask somebody. Let me ask somebody. Um, let me ask, come, yeah. yeah. Just a simple question I want to ask you. Yeah, that, that's great. That's working, man. Are you still single? Uh, not really. Yeah, not really. Okay. <laughs> you're single with a... Not with a relationship. With a, yeah, you're single with a, with, a, with a commitment. Yes. Okay. No, so no, no, no. I'm in a relationship. Yeah, it's a commitment to someone. You're in a relationship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you're, not, uh, you're, you're not in a relationship again? Like, no, I'm in a relationship. Okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, sir. Okay. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Okay, so good one. So, my question to you, not your question. I, where can I get bread to buy for all those people? Uh, try mat. Try mat. Yeah. Simple. The question to where something is is what? A location. A location. Yes or no? Yes. Fantastic. Thank you. <laughs> that, that, <laughs> was that difficult? No. So look at this question. So you will, see the, you will see the pain of Jesus. Jesus looked at Philip and he said, what did he ask? Where shall we buy bread that this may eat? What should the question be? By the road in Galilee. The woman that sells bread by the river Jordan. That, that should be the response. What did Philip say? Great. Next one. The Bible says this. And watch this now. This is very powerful. And he asked him to prove him. He asked him to test him. That's the other word for proof. Why? For he himself knew what he want, would do. Everybody look up here. Let me teach you a Bible lesson. Everybody, up, 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 up. Every time God asks you a question, it's because he wants to reveal your foolishness to you. Because what answer can you give God that he doesn't know you will say? Before he asked, he knew the answer. Before you answered, he knew what he would say. So why is he asking you? He wants you to hear yourself. And that's a good time to clap, people. That's a good time to clap. That, that's a good time. Are, are you taking it in this morning? Yeah. Very powerful. <laughs> so, so God says to you, do you want to marry her? He said, yes. <laughs> and God said, did you hear that? He said, no. <laughs> see, what, see what he said. He said, and he said this to prove him, for he himself knew what he would do. Verse 7. Let's go back. Verse 7. What did verse 7 say? And Philip answered him, what did Philip say? Slow down. Let's read this again. Let's read it again. And Philip said, hey, hey, what was the question? Let's go back to verse 4. Verse 4. What was the question? Verse 4 again. Verse 4. No, verse 5 rather. Verse 5. Verse 5. Philip, what? Philip, where? 
No, you have to read it with energy. Read, read as if the Lord has answered. Run to go. By the bread that this may eat. Yeah? Is that the question? Verse 6. See Philip's answer. Want to go. Brothers and sisters, was Philip answering the question? Why wasn't Philip answering the question? Because Philip had scarcity and poverty mentality that did not allow him to hear the question. He heard what was in his mind. His mind could not comprehend that we can get bread to feed all these people. His mind said, what was the cost? The reason why is this. Many of you, when God speaks to you to provide for you, you don't hear. Not because God is not answering. Because of how your mind is. I'm telling you. Did you see the mind? See, this is the difference between abundance mentality and what? Scarcity mentality. Scarcity mentality. God comes to Philip and says, hey, where can we buy bread? You know why Philip, see, the question was so high for Philip, eh? He needed a step down transformer to step it down to how we used to think. And he missed it by a mile. More than a mile. God asks you, do you want to go into oil and gas? He said, I don't know anybody. Did you hear what he just said? The question that do you want is yes or no. I know somebody. It's another question. Yes or no? Why did he say I don't know? Because in your mind, that question was an impossible. You can't see the way. So you have to answer a question that is familiar to you. Praise God. I said, praise God. See, you don't understand. Once a question is above you, you answer that question. Are you getting me this morning? Yes, sir. No, that's weak. Are you getting me this morning? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. See, the problem with finance is this. Can your mind take it? Let me tell you something. I'm going to slow down with this. You want to know how to raise money, right? You want the result to raise finance? Yes, sir. You want to know how to raise finance for the business? Yes, sir. For the startup? Yes, sir. For your house? Yes, sir. For your wedding? Yes, sir. How do you raise it? The first thing that money is raised internally, not externally. Yes, what was God, what was just telling Philip? Philip, he wanted Philip to hear himself. That Philip, we can feed these people, but your mind cannot contain it. I'll give another example. The reason why many people pray for funds and never get it is this. Although they are praying, in their mind, they know they cannot raise it. They know they cannot raise it. And let me tell, let's be honest. We pray about things we know we cannot have. Is it not true? No, now. We all play this game now. Are we not all Christians here? Even in the Bible, it was there. They sat down together and prayed. Father, release Peter, release Peter, release Peter. Man, they were all guys, you know, all the apostles. Bragada, braka, ash, One young girl came, Rhoda. Say, excuse me. Peter was praying for Jesus at the door. They say, you are mad. How will he escape? He's in prison. Why were they praying? So, so, so that did not start today. It had always been in the Bible. Is that not true? In fact, they told him, he says, it's not Peter. He says, ghost. They can say, sir. But this is what we're praying about. Our answer to prayer is at the door. Do you see the hypocrisy of Christians? We pray about things that will not happen. So, the challenge is this. There's a reason why people don't raise funds. And the reason is simple. Because they don't think they can. And the thing is this. They don't think they can. They don't believe they can. Let's do another test. How many of you here have been trying to raise two million for a business or somewhere around that amount for the past one year? Don't stand up, do this. Just put your hands up and put it down. After I say go, don't worry. You trying to raise two million or lower than that for the past one year? We just put your hands up and put it down. Are you ready? Will you be honest? Yes, sir. Okay, no hands straight. I'm not going to go forward. Will you be honest? Yes, At the back, will you be honest? 
No, I can at the back. Will you be honest? Okay, good. So if you've been trying to raise two million or something like that for a business for the past two years, for the past one year, I have not raised it. Or something lower than that. You just put your hands at this and do it. After I say go, right? Okay. Everybody just watch. Go! Did you say a lot of did you say a lot of people? Did you say a lot of people? Good. And watch this now. Why have they not been able to raise it two million? It is impossible to raise it two million. That's why. But watch this. All of that raised up their two hands. If they told you that you have kidney problem and you need eight million dollars for operation, won't you find it? Yes or no? Talk to me. Yes or no? What's the difference? One, you believe you will find it. You see now. The other one, you don't believe you will find it. The reason, watch this now. The reason people have not been able to raise funds for their business is this. It's something they want to do. It's something they should do. It's not something they must do. When it becomes what you must do, the money will come out. I'm telling you. When, when it becomes what you must do, it will come out. You will see someone that's never raised 500000 for business before. They will say his sister has six months to leave. He needs 10 million. This guy, he will raise 10 million. The difference is this. When it comes to business capital, if I don't get it, she will not die. She may have, nothing will happen. I, I will just manage what I have. You still have options. You still have options. Once it becomes what I must do, you will find a way. Sir, you don't have a problem. You have not made up your mind. Capital is not your problem. I say you have not made up your mind. Once you make up your mind, the money will come out. Ah. When the woman, when the woman, the widow's wife, saw she could borrow money, she was borrowing. When she had collateral, she borrowed. But when there was nobody to use to borrow again, she went to meet the prophet and said, prophet, save me. Ah, you have option. Look at the four lepers. The four lepers says, if we stay here, we die. If we go there, we die. Let's go and die once and for all. At least we will die with food in our mouth. The major reason why people don't raise the capital is this. It's something they want to. It's something they should. It's not something they must. Let me give another example. Who here has lost weight radically? And you've lost over 10 kg and you have maintained it. Anybody here? 10 kg. You've lost weight radically and you have less over 10 kg. Who? Who is that? There's a lady. Will you come? Who is that lady with the hands up? Come, come. Where's the lady? Come, come. And you have lost 10 kg and you have kept it, right? 26 kg. Wow. Come over here. Can I say something? Did it have to do with your health? It didn't have to do with your health. Why did you lose it? Did it have to do with your health, somebody's health that you saw? Something like that. No, I just wanted to feel better about my body. That's all. In your body. Lady, yeah, one of the most impressive I've ever seen. I want to ask you, did it have to do with your health? Did it have to do with marriage, relationship? Just by yourself. Okay, fantastic. Thank you. So what's the motivation? You want to look good for yourself. Okay, thank you. Can I get somebody else? I, I'm, I, I'm, because the reason why I'm saying so is that, the reason why I'm saying so is that most people that you know that have lost weight in their body, it was a health problem. Yes or no? Anybody like that here? It was a health issue. Just, what, what, lady with a nose mask, just come now, just come. Thank you, thank you. There's a lady that raised up hand. Let me encourage her. The person behind her, just help me encourage her to come. Yeah. Praise God. Are you getting blessed? Yeah. I want to show you something. So we had one lady that said I did by herself. That can happen. That, that's... So how, many, how, how much did you lose, ma'am? 12. What? 12 kg. 12 kg. What, why did you have to lose weight? High cholesterol, blood pressure. High cholesterol, blood pressure. Before that time, you've been trying to lose weight before, right? Not really. Not really. The reason I'm saying, thank you very much. The reason I'm saying so is this. The reason why Simpson. How many of us here are trying to lose weight? Hands up, including me. Have you lost weight? 
No, you know, because it's something you want to do. It's something you should do. It's not something you must do. Once the doctor says, if you don't lose weight, it's five more months till you die. Ladies and gentlemen, you say you can't stop eating rice, you will stop eating rice. And, and you will stop, you can't stop, you will, you will stop. He said, can't, he said, no, 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 I, I'm, a, I'm a foodie, I'm a sweet food matter person. It's because they've not give you deadline. When they give you deadline, you will, you will know that there's, the reason why is that, this is why people don't access funding, because funding for them is something I want. Um, this time is something I want, 20 minutes, something I want, 100 minutes, something I want. It's not something I must, I must have. So guess what? And until it becomes what you must have, your mindset will not change. And the Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, until something that you must have, your faith will not be fully formed. What should you do? Everybody listen to this. When you get home, get a piece of paper. Write what you should want. Write the reason you must have it. Write it until your head now changes and moves it from what I should want to what I must have. That's the first step. Are, are you getting blessed this morning? Yes, Let's close from the book of Nehemiah. So the reason why people don't get funding is this. <laughs> they don't get funding. Is because, and, and listen, once it becomes what you must have, your mindset begins to see it. It begins to see it. It begins to see it. Because it's just a way your, your, your spirit works. Glory to God. That's why no matter how it is, you will find out rent. Is that not true? Ah, uh, it must be. Ah. Uh, girls that cannot save when it comes to whether they save. Because it moves from something I should do to something that I must do. Glory to God. Let's read random from the book of Nehemiah. Nehemiah chapter 1. Someone say Hallelujah. How, how many of you do you feel this was a, this a problem you have with your funds? You, you feel that that's, that's me that you just spoke about? If you feel so, wave your hands. Don't, don't, don't feel bad. That's good. Yeah. And that's why sometimes when God wants to help you, it would destroy the present. It's not Satan. God needs to. So, what God does is that sometimes God will allow Satan to attack you. Not that he, he did it himself. But when Satan attacks you, that crisis turns you into that person. What you should do now becomes what you must do. You don't say Satan, God, Satan, Satan, God attacked me. It was not God. God just leveraged the attack of the enemy to also teach you wisdom. Praise God. Nehemiah chapter 1, verse 2. And this is how we're going to close. So how do I believe God and access funds? You have to remove the obstacle. The obstacle is that number one, I need to have a strategy. So if I want funding, I need to have a strategy. The reason why you must have a strategy is that sometimes funding is not what you get once. It's a recurrent cycle. So you have to find a plan so that the engine can keep flowing. Okay, that's the first thing. The second thing about funding which is powerful is this. I can. I can. I can get the 100 million. I can. I don't really should, I must. Say, I can. I can raise the money. I can get the funding. Oh, see, the way you're saying it doesn't work that way. You have to say it with energy. Say, I can. I can. Say, I can. I can get the capital. I can start the business. I can buy the property. I can excel in Nigeria. I can become a global force. I can. I can. I can. Through Christ. That straightens me. That's it. That's it. That's it. So how do you... So if I believe in God, so I want to start a tech business... I want to buy my first house. What do I do? How, does, how do we believe God for this? First thing, look at this. Nehemiah chapter 1 verse 2. And then one of the brethren came in, certain men of Judea, and I asked them concerning the Jews that escaped, which are left of the captivity, and concerning Jerusalem. And they said unto me, the remnant that left of the captivity that are in the, that are in the province are in great affliction. It says they are suffering. He says, and in great reproach, and the wall of Jerusalem is also broken down, and the gates thereof are burnt with fire. Verse 4, and it came to pass when I heard this, that I sat down and wept and mourned certain days and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven. And let me explain what this means. Everybody look up here. When God wants to bless you, 
You know what he'll do? He will begin to create circumstances to enlarge your financial needs. It will, yeah, it will begin to increase your financial taste. I'm telling you. Do you know that Nehemiah was okay where he was? But what happened to Nehemiah was that he had something that destroyed his life. And the reason why is that God was sending him on a project. Why that thing resonated with him was because he was the one meant to rebuild the wall. So, when he heard it, it was not just hearing something. There was a connection between what he heard and his destiny. So, the baby in his womb lived because someone has appealed to destiny. Are you listening to me? How does this work in real life? I will tell you how it works in real life. A voice, when God wants to bless you, I said, it will begin to throw financial weights at you. What I say, it will show what? Come on, people. He will do what? He will throw financial weights at you. You will just hear, that's your brother, eh? That is struggling, that they start paying his school fees. And his school fees is two million. And all you need is five million. And you will think God wants to kill you, but no. Because he needs to create expansion. He must put weight on you so that weight can bring about all the expansion. What most of you don't realize is this. When you hear that thought, you say, no, no, I'm not doing that. In not doing that, you lose the opportunity to what? To grow. Because if you accept that two million, you know what to happen? Because your income is only five million plus the two million, it just go to seven. But God needs you to accept that for the expansion to happen. Where's my weight? But God wants to bless you. I say we'll put weight on you. And there are two options. You need to help me get this. When he puts weight on you, God will say, God will give you weight. You can say, ah, I don't want. And drop it. But when you drop it, your financial muscle will never develop. Pick up the weight. When God gives you weight, you say, Lord, it's heavy. But let me move it. Let me move it. Let me move it. As you move it, what happens? Your financial muscle begins to develop. Even when that problem is solved, your muscles are not developed. Yeah. Are, are you hearing me? That's what God does. God, God will put financial weight in you. He, he will just tell you, he will just, I'm, I'm telling you, he will, just, he will just tell you something. He will just tell you something like, you know, he said, just start another office in Ekoi and say, where will I get the money from? He has put weight on you. And he's hoping. This is what you don't realize. Because someone says, how do I know it's God? Because the Bible says it's God that works in us both to will and to do. So that expansion desire is God telling you, I want to expand you. But because you have not been taught, you are not able to sense that that desire is the weight. And what God wants to do is to cooperate with it for expansion. What do you do? You drop the weight. But the wise people say, I don't drop the weight. I take the weight. I begin to move it. I begin to move it. I begin. That's why when God wants to deal with you, you know what he does? The things you celebrate will begin to frustrate you. Oh my God. Once you understand what I'm talking about, the testimonies you have had will begin to frustrate you. And it's not as if you're ungrateful. It's just because the voice had said, come up here. The same voice that John heard will say what? Come up here. And it's wait. It's wait. Wait. And God is just developing you. Question. Are you accepting weight or you're dropping weight? Are you accepting weight on what? You're dropping weight. Because what God needs to do for your finances is to build your financial muscle. But he's not going to build it by sending an angel. He's going to build it by putting what? Financial weight. I want to ask you a question. Help me hold on to this. Let me ask you a question. When Jesus Christ saw the multitude, must he feed them? Yes or no? No. Why did he feed them? It entered his heart that feed them. Just understand. With the instruction to feed them comes the provision to feed them. So he said, let them, let them be fed. Are, are you here? Some of you are here. The weight God has, God will just tell you. God will just tell you and say, hey, oh boy, give one million. So one million. As a matter of every month, give this amount. And you wonder, how will it happen? Is the weight. When you start carrying weight, initially it's very difficult. But after some time, when your muscles are built... You have to get bigger weight again. And that's what is happening. Many of you, the reason why I'm not growing financially is this. God is throwing weight on you. I'm going to throw weight to you. You better, you better catch it. No, no, hold the other one today. Hold it. So catch it one hand. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so I'm throwing weight to you. You see? When God throws weight to you, 
He said, hey, I'm afraid. But you catch it. Every time weight is given to you, it's an opportunity to build. Every time you throw down weight, it's an opportunity not to grow. How many people have been throwing down weight here? You've been throwing down weight. Oh, you know. And you don't realize that is your... Because your financial growth is not going to come from comfort. It's going to come from discomfort. Growth happens outside comfort zones. Praise God. Let's close. So watch this now. When God throws you wait to make sure that what God is throwing is what you want to do, you don't act on it. Neymar went to God in prayer. You go to God in prayer and say, Father, I don't know why I was driving. And that voice says, look at that house. It can be yours. Is it that you want me to own it? The reason why is that I don't want the flesh to put weight on me. I want to be a weight of the spirit. As you pray through, the voice of the Holy Ghost will emerge. And that's it. That's it. Let me tell you what the problem is. The problem is this. Oh, wow. The problem is this. When it's time, and the Holy Ghost said, do this, and you don't go and pray. This is the mistake people make. You don't go and pray, and the Holy Ghost said, take the house. When you go and pray, you, you now want to help God, like Abraham. What did Abraham do? Sarah was meant to give birth to Isaac. Sarah, Abraham and Sarah could no longer wait for God. So you know what they did? They made happen by the flesh what the spirit should do. But they did not produce Isaac. They rather produced what? Ishmael. What is Ishmael? Ishmael is a type of what the flesh tries to replicate of what the spirit should do. That's what it is. So you're here and the voice says, that house, buy it. And when you go to the house and buy it, they call the amount for you. You don't have it. In some of you to say, Father, you said so. How do I do? You go to the flesh. You just remember your boyfriend when you're not born again. Allergy. Danda. You just say, Allergy, how are you? I want to come and see you. You go and see Allergy. When you see Allergy, you tell him about the house. He's a good guy. You lay on the altar and perform the sacrifices. You know the altar, right? Uh huh. You lay on the altar and sacrifices. Three days and three nights you were there. After three days and three nights, you now came out and say, you got a transfer. You now come to church. Praise the Lord. God did it. We know what God did though. We know what God did not do. Don't say I'm a big girl with a small boy. We know who your God is. God is an little chief. This and this. Don't, don't say what is not. We know what God did because we know our God. What you have done is that you bought the house where is an Ishmael. What is an Ishmael? You have produced the result of the spirit by the method of the flesh. Instead of you to go to God in prayer and say, Lord, how do I go to this? The reason why you went back to Elijah is that that's how your mind has always worked. When something happens, I go to daddy. When something happens, I go to Elijah. When something happens, I go to chief. When something happens, my uncle over there. When something happens, this over there. You always go. You know what? Every time you do that, this is what you do yourself. You, you handicap your financial future. You know why? I learned this as a child. As a child, my mother brought, I'd never seen um, a Greek birds. So they brought one home. And their Greek bed, the birds that will lay and hatch eggs. So the, the bed lay down and hatch eggs, about eight eggs. But one did not break that day. So and I said, uh-uh, this one did not break. Let me go and help the hen to break. So I poke it and broke it. And good enough, the chick came out. The problem is this. The chick died in three days. So I asked my mother. My mother was experienced in agriculture. My mother said, you don't understand this works. It's not the, the mother bed that helps them break the shell. He said, they are the one that breaks the shell. But this one, they must, you must not break the shell for them. In them trying to come out of the shell, their leg muscles develop. He said, the one you broke the shell for, the leg muscles not develop. So there was no way it could feed. So he had to ultimately die because you assisted it. Some of you don't know that what is killing you is the assistance you are getting. I'm telling you, it's the assistance you are getting that is killing you. If you are going to succeed financially, you will be like the man in John. He said, take up your bed and what walk. What is your bed? He said, the, the financial structure and support system that carried you, carry it and walk. The more there's someone to look into, you'll never see God. Praise God. 
the more, I'm telling you. But it takes faith to see support system walk away and say, the Lord is my source. It takes faith and confidence. Praise God. Let's pray.